Hey guys, welcome back to the build. Um, for today, I'm going to be working on setting the timing for the LNF or LDK. LDF. And uh, besides setting the timing, I'm probably going to be closing up the oil pan as well. And possibly, and for not possibly, I will be closing out the valve cover as well. So stay tuned and look at how the timing is set. Now my way of setting the timing is probably not the best way to set the timing but that's the way I set it because it's kind of simple in my opinion and it prevents, not prevents, but it kind of um, removes the hassle from setting the timing on the primary chain. This is pretty much how it's going to be. Now on this mark, the big sprocket, you have to line up that first dot at the 6 o'clock position. And on the smaller sprocket, the one that goes for the cams, you have to line that white dot at the 5 o'clock position. Now some of y'all might not see this white dot here because one of these shims will be on the way. So you'd have to remove this little shim out of the place so that way you can be able to see that 5 o'clock position timing mark for the camshaft chain. So basically this little shim piece of metal goes inserted here or let me show you, it goes inserted here so you can't really see the timing mark and you won't be able to see the timing mark so what you have to do is remove it and you'll be able to get to that timing mark right there now this is going to be the primary chain, the darker colored one and it's going to have two white links and a yellow one or two white and a green link so it's pretty simple, for the first one I'm going to line up one of the white links at the 6 o'clock dot the next of the white links you'll see on the exhaust side of the shoot what is it of the engine balancer it's going to say white and on the intake side of the engine balancer it's going to say green so i'm going to be lining up on the six o'clock position white exhaust white on the intake side it says green but my chain link is yellow so we'll be lining that up with the corresponding arrows I'm going to be lining up the first white link on the 6 o'clock position of the sprocket. I'll hold this guy up here. Then this yellow link is going to line up to the green arrow. Then this white link should end up on the exhaust with the arrow. And there it is. You got on the intake balancer, you got the green arrow on the yellow sprocket, on the exhaust balancer, the white arrow on the white sprocket. And on the main crankshaft sprocket, you got the six o'clock position on the white colored link. Next, what I'll be adding after the chain is installed would be these guides for the primary chain and this tension here for the primary chain as well. So basically what I'll do is I'll first set them into location where they belong. Then you can start setting the bolts. That way they get into place or into position and torque them down afterwards. I'm missing one. Birds are happy today. Nice and fresh. Rained, not rain, drizzled a bit earlier. Turned out to be a good day. So I just kind of hand tighten all of them.
Oops. All right. Always losing 10 millimeters, but I got it. I got it back. I ain't losing this one. This one's expensive. Okay. After they're all set, pretty much. Now what I have to do is make sure they're torqued down to 89 inch pounds. Okay, now that I got my torque wrench, I'm a, I have set it to 89 inch pounds. You probably can't see it, but it's set to 89 inch pounds and I can start tightening up all these bolts behind me. First would be the one for the tensioner. Thirty nine inch pounds and this guide. Thirty nine inch pounds. Thirty nine inch pounds. Thirty nine inch pounds. Just make sure this one's 89 inch pounds as well. There. Now they're all set to 89 inch pounds. What I'll do to make sure the torque is I'll color it in. And I know I've already torqued all of these bolts down. Now, gonna, now that I'm here, double check these. Now I know these are torqued as well. Now that I've got you here, this is one of the pieces also that's needed, the tensioner. Now I went ahead and compressed it and held it on with a... Stay, no, what the hell is it called? This thing, little clip for offices. Went ahead and held it with that. So it's already nice and compressed. And uh, let me go ahead and apply this on and Park it down as well. This one goes into position here. This one will also get torqued to 89 inch pounds. Mark them down too to know their torques. Now I'm gonna leave it compressed. I'm not gonna pull it so it won't make tension on it yet. So let me go ahead, drop the top chain. So let me go ahead and drop the top chain right here. Now we'll grab onto these cams and for the secondary sprocket, which is this one right here, and set that timing up for y'all. I'm back here on another day uh, of setting the timing for the cobalt. I ran out of daylight on the first day to do the second set of chain, but uh, I should get through with that today, um, which will consist of setting the timing for the cams to go with the crankshaft and the finalizing it. Okay, so as you can see, this is how the first timing chain is set, and now I just need to connect that second sprocket with these cams. This is the second chain for the cams to the crankshaft. It's a little bit longer chain uh, so you won't get confused of which one goes on which one this one also has three colored links which is consists of two purples and one blue and the blue uh, unique color link will be uh, on the timing mark for the intake camshaft actuator and uh, intake camshaft sprocket I'm sorry and uh, the two purple ones will be on exhaust and the five o'clock position for the crankshaft sprocket now this one here is the intake uh, sprocket for the cams, you will see that it will say here, it says INT, and you see that little diamond mark on there? That's gonna go on this blue unique cutter link, 
and uh, being set at the two o'clock position. Let me show you how. So when you're gonna install it, you can preset it up like this, having the blue cutter link on the little diamond that that's shown on the sprocket. And when you can start doing it, it's just to drop it in. Make sure it goes around the band and pretty much will be, should be getting set at the two o'clock position, which would be right there. Then the next thing that we can do is get the exhaust camshaft sprocket and line it up the diamond to that purple cutter link on it. And what we might have to do is rotate the camshaft so that it can be able to sit in place. So after the chain is set, this is more as how it should look. The blue unique color link on the intake at two o'clock and the purple link on the exhaust at 11 o'clock. And down here, there's this um, white dot, which is should be at the five o'clock position and should line up to this purple color link. All we have to finish adding now is the guide and the tensioner for the camshaft. This is just a guide, the tensioner here, along with the tension. Here it's already compressed, so it's good to go. Uh, I got the bolts for the camshafts, and here are the rest of the bolts for the guide and tensioners, along with the upgraded uh, kit that I received from Jeffrey. So I don't have a problem with it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is feed the, the guide up through here. Then put this bolt on it to start lining it up. And put on this upgraded one here to start lining it up also. All I have to do is just slide it down from the top. And it should pop up through here. Then just put the bolt on it to hold it and secure it in place. Then start putting the exhaust camshaft sprocket back on. And now you see that the links are on the two o'clock, 11 o'clock, and at the five o'clock position. So all I would have to do now is just set the torque for the three bolts that were installed and uh, put the tensioner. That way I cut the slack off. So this one here is a tensioner, like I mentioned before. This one where you'll put it is uh, on the back of the head. There's this hole here where you just go ahead and insert the tensioner on the inside there. And uh, just start fastening it. And that tensioner will put tension on, uh, on this right here. So they'll cut the slack off of the chain. Now for the rear tensioner, I got a one and a quarter inch socket that will fit it perfectly fine and you can get it tightened. So just go and tighten it. I like to tighten this until I can't no more. And uh, that's tight right there. And for those three bolts that I put on, those go towards that 89 inch pound torque. Okay guys, I've been mistaken. When you get the upgraded kit, I had to pay attention to it. But this one does not go in the access plug. Nothing will go there. This piece here takes care of what's a bolt, of the bolt that's supposed to go in the access plug. So you will not need a bolt because this will take care of it. It would be pretty simple. So just I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on. Uh, use a one inch socket to tighten it and uh, it should be good to go That's tight. So basically this is how it's gonna be lined up. 
intake, you need to cut a link at the 2 o'clock position. Exhaust with the purple link at the 11 o'clock position. And purple link on the smaller sprocket at the 5 o'clock position. Everything else is set up the way it's supposed to be. And it should be good to go, including the tensioner back here. The only things I have to add now are both of the bolts that go there and the guide that goes here on top. And there you have it guys. It took a little bit longer but it got on already. Along with the bolts and this upper guide torqued down as well to 89 inch pounds. And that's how the timing is on any 2.0, 2.2 and 2.4 Ecotech.